Shipping is the most cost-effective method of transportation of goods. Seaborne trade is about 90% of the total world trade in seafarers contributes substantially by ensuring that this trade is continuously performed as per schedule with minimum delays or loss to cargo, life or environment. Merchant vessels are ships that are primarily used either for carrying cargo or passengers. Basically, the ships that are engaged in active commercial transportation fall in this category. The Navy ships or pleasure craft that don't charge passengers are excluded from the category of merchant vessels. Merchant vessels come in different sizes and shapes. It can be as small as a 6 meters, 20 feet, long diving boat, or as big as ultra-large crude carriers, ULCC, that can be up to 415 meters, 1,361 feet, long. They are the main tool of ocean transportation, carrying crude oil and goods throughout the world, in varied sizes of tankers, containers and bulk carriers. Almost all countries in the world possess and operate merchant ships. Currently, the Greek merchant fleet is the largest in the world accounting for over 16% of the world's total tonnage. Types of merchant vessels. Merchant vessels can be divided into different categories according to their size and purpose. 1. Dry cargo ships, bulk carriers and container ships. 2. Tankers. 3. Passenger ships. 4. Specialized vessels. 5. Offshore vessels. A ship is like a floating city having several different parts. However, we can't imagine a ship without its three main parts which are, 1. The cargo holds or tanks. 2. Machinery space or engine room. 3. Accommodation space.
Ships are large, complex vehicles which must be self-sustaining in their environment for long periods with a high degree of reliability. The engine room is the powerhouse of every ship. It is also a hot and noisy environment in which care must be taken to avoid accident and injury. The engine room is the space on the ship where all the machinery is located. Well, almost all the machinery, as there are several items of major equipment that are outside the engine room such as cranes, winches, and so forth. The engine room extends right from the bottom most level to the level of the funnel. The engine control room is the command center of the engine room and is usually the only air-conditioned place within the engine room, which is otherwise full of noise and heat. This is because of the presence of computers and delicate controls. Marine propulsion or the main engine is the mechanism or system used to generate thrust to move the ship across the ocean. The first advanced mechanical means of marine propulsion was the marine steam engine, introduced in the early 19th century. During the 20th century it was replaced by two-stroke or four-stroke diesel engines and gas turbine engines on faster ships. Development in liquefied natural gas LNG, fueled engines are gaining recognition for their low emissions and cost advantages. Marine auxiliary machinery is designed to ensure the proper functioning of a ship's main engines, piping systems, and equipment. Marine auxiliary machinery includes pumps, compressors, and blowers for circulating fuel in the fresh water and seawater used in cooling systems, for supplying air to the starting system of the main engine 
for cooling refrigerated holds, and for air conditioning various parts of the ship and for refrigeration machinery. Marine auxiliary machinery also includes separators for removing water and other contaminants from fuel and oil, steering machinery, capstans, windlasses, winches for anchoring, mooring, and cargo loading, and cranes. Other items include heat exchangers used to condense vapors and to heat and cool working fluids, such as water oil, and air, filters for the seawater and fuel supplies, and separators for built water. Name of course, Marine Auxiliary Machinery 1. Course code, DKM 20103. Synopsis. Marine Auxiliary Machinery 1 exposes the students to understand the working principles of Marine Auxiliary Machinery in theory and practice as well as the related thermodynamics and fluid processes. The students also will be able to relate components, operation and system of the Marine Auxiliary Machinery. This syllabus covers the requirements of the STCW Code, Chapter 3. Section A3 slash 1. This functional element provides the detailed knowledge to support the training outcomes related to maintenance and repair at the operational level. Semester and year offered, semester 2. Credit value, 3. Prerequisite, if any, none. Course learning outcomes, CLO. Upon completion of this course, students should be able to CL01, explain the principles and functions of the related components and system of the marine auxiliary machinery. CL02, apply the principles and functions of the system in the operation of the marine auxiliary machinery. CL03, discuss the related components and system of the marine auxiliary machinery. Main reference supporting the course. HDMC George. 1995. Marine Auxiliary Machinery, 7th Edition, Butterworth Heinemann. Additional references supporting the course. 1. D. A. Taylor, 1996. Introduction to Marine Engineering, 2nd Revised Edition, Butterworth Heinemann. 2. T. K. Grover, 2007. Basic Marine Engineering. 3. Thomas D. Morton, 2013. General Engineering Knowledge for Marine Engineers, 5th Edition. Course Syllabus. Chapter 1 Marine Air Compressors and System.
Chapter 2, Marine Refrigeration System Chapter 3, Marine Fuel Oil Treatment and Centrifuges Chapter 4, Marine Heat Exchangers Chapter 5, Marine Thermal Fluid Heating System Chapter 6, Marine Heating, Ventilation and Air Conditioning HVAC. Assessment Method 1. Coursework Assessment CA. 50% 2. Final Examination Assessment FA. 50% Coursework Assessment CA. 1. End of chapters. 2. Quizzes. 3. Tests. 4. Group discussion. Final examination assessment. FA. 2 sections. Structural questions. Section A. Structured. 3 questions. Answer all questions. Section B. Structured. 3 questions. Answer any 2 questions.